These morons haven't left the best footprints behind. But after all these years, have you ever wondered where they landed? If I can leave the past in the past, how come you guys aren't able to do that too? Well, this weirdo right here, who endlessly thanked Chris for his service to the community, did a full 180 after his arrest. Parents actually was a... Uh... It's pretty interesting, actually. You see, Jesse Velez was quite a character. When Chris exposed him with his own chat, the dude had no idea how to react. The best he could come up with was this. First, he tried to brush every accusation under the rug. And when that didn't work, he started blurting out random garbage that barely made any sense. You know, just like an ordinary conversation, like a like, 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 friendly type thing. It wasn't like anything sexual. Anyway, the ordeal continued with Jesse dishing out one lie after the other. But when the cameras came out, his confidence took a major hit. He probably had no idea that he was already being recorded. But hold up, did you happen to see his ring? Well, it looks like it wasn't just his confidence that broke that day. Well, despite the awkward situation, Jesse offered to talk to Chris in private, but the cops were running out of patience. Not this one, All right, very well. Why am I nervous? So let's cut to what happened after his arrest. The dude was charged with three felony accounts, but despite all the evidence against him, he decided to play the victim. He posted a very lengthy message on Facebook, blaming the show for pushing him into depression. He talked about how he was paying big time for a stupid mistake he made. He also mentioned that he'd lost many friends, family members, and had also immensely hurt his boyfriend because of his poor decision making. And after ranting his heart out, he ended his long and sentimental statement asking the public to look in the mirror before judging or bullying him. Oh come on, seriously? I mean, what a load of nonsense. Either way, it doesn't really matter what he thought about his case because Jesse Velez entered a guilty plea in April of 2016. Three months later, he was sentenced to prison in July for a period of five years. Additionally, he was placed on probation for 10 years and even had to officially register as an offender. But that wasn't the end of it. Jesse once again got into trouble in 2019 for violating the terms of his probation. Four years later, Jesse was back in the courtroom on March 17th, 2023 and this time he was sentenced to prison for another three years. Going by this update, Jesse might still be cooling his heels behind bars somewhere. But while looking for more information on him, I came across this Reddit thread where one of his colleagues posted about his behavior at work. A former colleague talked about how Jesse would act all flirtatious around cute guys and was basically a sleazeball who made inappropriate jokes about anything and everything. The fact he had a fiance made it all the more disgusting. But this next loser showed up at the Sting House on his birthday. Now, everybody who shows up to the Sting House is desperate for some action, but Lorne Armstrong was something else. Today is his birthday. He's 37-year-old Lorne Armstrong, a construction worker. While most promised to bring gifts, Lorne had something much more to offer. I wish I could marry you right now, because I would do it. That's how special you are to me, and that's how much I love you. Yeah, he claimed that he'd fallen head over heels with the setup. Wow, how romantic. But guess what? He didn't stop there. He took things to the next level and actually proposed to marry her. I mean, wild. And when Chris confronted him about it, you wouldn't believe what he had to say. I think I should go to counseling to get off the internet. I gotta do something that I can't do that. Oh my god. Yeah, like crying was gonna make anything better. He's taken to the local police station where his car is searched. Anyway, after his much publicized arrest, the dude decided to break his silence through his YouTube channel. And he wasn't back to clear his name, but to show the world how he spent his days. Right from his workout sessions to his elaborate meal plans, dude had everything on display. I guess he just got used to being on camera, but you have to give it to him. He actually turned his arrest into something profitable for himself. Can you believe it that he actually started selling merch with crazy prints from the show? I mean, the dude loved just printing money, I guess, even from his downfall. However, his celebrity status met its demise in 2019 when he was arrested for violating his parole. I mean, I can't say I'm shocked. Dude was then registered into a rehab program, which once again, he failed to attend. To make things worse, he once showed up under the influence during one of the classes 
and this landed him back in prison for another six months. Lauren was finally released in February 2020, but guess what? During his prison time, he actually took interest in writing a book. As of 2023, according to his RSO information, today he's living as a free man somewhere in a trailer selling junk for a living. Well, at least he's doing something with his life, but this next guy had the most bizarre excuse for showing up at the house. You see, Edward Hollingsworth came up with the worst reason to save face. I cannot believe I did this. Why not? My best friend's mom is dying of cancer. Okay, so how does that make anything that you were planning to do today okay? Well, sadly for him, this little fantasy wouldn't last long. But guess what? This dude turned out to be pretty lucky. When a high-profile dude decided to off himself before the cops laid a hand on him, the show ran into some legal trouble. Lawsuits were flying left, right, center, and as a result, a bunch of charges had to be dropped. And what do you know? Edward was one of them. Sometime in 2019, one of his co-workers posted a picture of him which dated back to 2010, to a long time before the sting. Apparently, nobody chose to keep in touch with him after his deep dark secrets were revealed on national television. Again, not very surprising. While we never got to see Chris interview him, and Edward never got to spend time in prison, it turns out he passed away on June 12, 2012 after battling pneumonia. Despite the dire condition he was in, Edward made it a point to keep his fans updated about his health status. He also mentioned how the lack of visitors was eating into his brain. But his last sentence is what caught my attention. He signed off saying, I don't forget these things. Ooh, I mean, creepy, right? I, I wonder if he's still out there haunting Chris and the rest of the team. Speaking of which, here comes another moron who was nearing the end of his life, but that didn't stop him from indulging in a little fun. Meet Charles Lawrence. He's looking for a boy. Yeah, he's the same guy Chris recognized from his daily commute on the train. It's supposed to rain, it's hurricane. You want something to eat? No. I know. You want to, you can take a seat, well. This thing wrapped up way earlier than I wanted it to. What happened is, as soon as Charles walked in, Chris was so stunned to see him that he jumped right in, right away. And that was that. Charles immediately recognized Chris and he reacted in the only way he knew how. No, Chris, what are you doing? He literally bolted towards that exit. However, he was rounded up by the cops and what followed next was a three year sentence in prison after being found guilty of three charges. Charles was finally released in 2018, but just one year before he was released, the company he was working in released a statement. Basically, he was kicked out of his job. But I did find his LinkedIn profile, which still lists him as a real estate agent. On further research, I found out that this company is still active and Charles is still listed as one of the CEOs. I guess Chris knew about this because in one of his podcasts, he mentions about Charles' license being at risk. Honestly, for a guy who mistook 13 for 18, I wouldn't be surprised. In 2021, someone on Reddit posted that they had seen Charles living in a 55 plus condo complex. Well, it looks like he's back to living his rich life. But before we head into the next loser, here's the latest mugshot of this loser from 2018. Up next, we've got a smooth criminal, posh car, posh outfit, and a posh attitude. Well, say hello to Cody Green. Yeah, I just got to drop into the washer, but I made some sweet tea. Come on in. And roasting him in online is my cleanest, best pleasure. Because I will come over and I will, I swear I will just be with you and I will not touch you or anything like that. You see, dude was here to do some damage, but in the end, he shot himself in the foot. Probably the cleanest, best pleasure, I would say. The cleanest, best pleasure. Unfortunately, this loser made bail in just a month. And yeah, he sure looked loaded. I'm pretty certain his family could afford anything thrown their way. On the ground! On the ground! On the ground! But Cody tried to put his best acting skills to use. Throughout his trial, he kept crying over the fact that he did what he did because he suffered a brain injury as a kid. I mean, he was definitely messed up in the head, but I'm sure that the alleged brain injury had nothing to do with it. Cody was subjected to a whole list of medical tests, and finally, it was time for the verdict. In 2006, he was found guilty of all of his charges, and the judge put him on a three-year sentence with an extended 12 years on probation. 
probation. And guess what? Cody was just released in September 2023 this year. But that doesn't mean he's a free man. The release came with a lot of restrictions. He was forced to wear an ankle monitor at all times, and he has to live with his parents. By the way, did you see what happened in his latest RSO picture? Dude looks like he's just completely done. But guess what? Some habits die hard. Apparently, he was arrested again barely a month after his release for flashing at someone in the pool. Well, some things, I guess, never change. But this next dude who jumped at the first opportunity to hug the setup has more on his plate than you could ever imagine. And started heading towards me. Do you want me to get you something to drink? He was definitely headed towards me for something. You see, all James Fowler was looking for was some fun. But look what he ended up with. The dude was arrested in 2009 and sentenced for 57 months, followed by strict supervision for five years. Well, these were the lists of federal charges. As for the state charges, he was slapped with seven years, and both of these sevens were to run consequently. But Fowler simply couldn't stop fooling around. He was once again arrested in 2014 for unlawfully entering an elementary school. I mean, wow. I wonder what he was up to, barging into an elementary school unannounced? I can only imagine what he was planning. Thankfully though, he was caught in the nick of time. But after that little stunt, Fowler's gone MIA. Since 2014, he decided to stay on the down low and no one heard from him until 2021. Joey's YouTube channel released a video of him. Well, looks like someone's having the best time of his life. Anyway, up next. We've seen some pretty heartless men on the show, but who remembers this crybaby? Who likes a mess? Why is it a mess? <laughs> yeah. And that was just two minutes into the interview. And the waterworks never seemed to stop. What do you do for a living? I don't have a job. <laughs> I'm a fuck up. <laughs> Look, I had a father who was overweight. I get it. It's tough. I'm so stupid. Well, this dude certainly had some talent there. I mean, how can anyone fake cry for that long? Anyway, none of it mattered to Chris, who continued to grill him until the cops took over. Sir, please. Uh, yes, we have now you have to listen to what happened next. After this jerk was arrested and found guilty of three charges, something crazy happened. Turns out he hadn't even informed his parents about his arrest. As a result, his father reached out to the online platform just to confirm his son's whereabouts. It was evident that this guy was deeply troubled by how his life had unraveled, to the point where he was too ashamed to disclose his actions to his parents. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. But there was no stopping Vincent. He was later arrested in 2016 for a number of charges, and he was thrown behind bars for 10 whole years with suspension for two years. Well, it looks like this loser didn't learn his lesson the first time around, and he was released from prison in 2018, and that was it. Dude went missing. In his podcast, Chris mentioned how Vincent must be living in a halfway home, probably because of some illegal images on his phone. And I don't think he's wrong in saying that, because when Vincent was arrested the second time in 2016, he had two phones on him. I wonder if he runs into trouble, or if trouble runs into him wherever he goes. So moving on from a crybaby to the master of liars. Oh, you have to agree. Anthony Palumbo was quite a handful. He's here, beer in hand, asking the decoy several times to put it in the refrigerator. The dude had a special knack for whipping up lies. Even before Chris could bat his eyelids, Palumbo was ready with his next set of lies. And that's how fluent he was. So why'd you need the cover story to go to uh, Atlantic City? I'll see my brother. And when Chris started to corner him, dude started getting agitated. And the lies, well, they started to falter. Yeah, because I was going to Atlantic City and it was dark and I'm not usually to drive at dark at you nighttime. Should, so the nighttime makes you nervous. Yeah, driving. But you see, Anthony had a pretty troubled past. Just two years before the sting, his dad has broken his mom's nose and poured boiling soap on Anthony's head. Ever since then, Anthony's been taking care of his mom. But instead of being more responsible, the dude decided to 
to screw up his life. Anthony was arrested in March 2007, and he posted bail by paying almost $50,000. Following year in July 2008, this loser pleaded guilty to one of the charges, and in December the same year, he was released with just a parole supervision. And yeah, of course he made it to the offenders list. Thereafter, Anthony was pretty much off the grid until he got arrested in 2019 for a hit and run case. Dude landed in the slammer for 45 days, and since then, he's been missing in action. By the way, there's been a buzz among the TCAP community that Anthony had become mentally ill in the recent past, but I mean, that's assuming he was ever sane in the first place. Well, if you're looking for the latest update on any of these weirdos, make sure to drop those names in the comments below, and I'll try my best to get the latest scoop on all of these freaks straight to your screen. And well, you know the drill. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notification. Also, if you thought this video was crazy, don't forget to check out the next one right here. It's even better.